So from yesterday or from previous lessons, how would you solve something like this? How would you solve this equation? Would you subtract one from seven? Yes. So X equals seven, okay? So not too bad, right? Now let's do something a little bit more difficult here. Um, I'm gonna give you another parallelogram. This one happens to look like a rectangle, but I'm telling you that it is parallelogram. And, and again, that means that the, the, the top here is parallel to the bottom. The left is parallel to the right, but it more importantly means congruence. It means that the top is congruent to the bottom. The left is congruent to the right. So I want you to set these two equal to each other and then to solve for, for X. How do I do that? How do I set it up? You write the top equal to the bottom and then solve for X like we've been doing. Um, previous previous problems you're just going to use the strategy you talked about in this case you got to move the variable around you got to move the numbers around What do I do when there's stuff on either side of the equal sign, like a bunch of stuff? You you move the variable from the smaller side to the larger side. So would I just add three to four then? Yeah, so when you move, it depends whether it's positive or negative. Since since three x is positive, you would you would subtract three x from both sides. Okay, and then so that you 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 can take four x and subtract three x, bring the negative one down. Okay, could you try solving it from here? Uh, do you have a question? Do you have an answer? What the? Uh... I forgot what to do first. Okay. Uh, so you've got subtraction of one and multiplication by one, and you undo addition and subtraction. So you you would add one to both sides. X equals. Okay, let's solve a couple more equations like these just to kind of refresh. So let's uh, let's look at something else here. Let's just say we worked a problem where this this became the uh, the result. Like maybe you found that something was equal. Doesn't really matter. Just like in the previous problem, you want to move the smaller variable side to the larger variable side. So in this case, you want to move the two x to the four x. How how would you do that? Or would you subtract two? Subtract two x. Okay. So on the left, it becomes four. Can you tell me what the right side becomes? Two x minus four. Good. And then you have to decide here: do I do you undo multiplication by two because you're looking at the side with the variable, or the subtraction by four? And you would add four. Yes, you'd have I couldn't remember if you had to. Um, I just couldn't remember if you had to combine any like terms beforehand or anything. 
So the, you would look at the line that we started with and, and there are no like terms because if you, and you, if you look just on each side, you say, okay, on the left, are there any like terms? Can, can this four go with the two? No, because it doesn't have an X. Same thing over here on the right. This four can't go with that minus four because that has an X and that the one on the right does not. So on the left here, it, 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 on the, down in our problem here, we have eight equals two X. What do we do to solve that? Divide by two. Divide by two, so x equals four. All right, so I'm gonna put a couple of problems in uh, in front of you here to try to solve. Uh, let me see. Yeah, this is good. So let's just say it's x plus 21 equals three x minus 15. Do you solve that for us, please? Eighteen. All right, x equals eighteen. So the way we can check this is we can actually put eighteen in for x and see if it if it works. You know, are the are these the same? And uh, I believe this is correct, but it's always good to kind of kind of have another path to know if you are right. And yes, that does work. Okay, let's do one more before we move on to uh, something else here. Let's just do five x minus nine equals three x plus 11, 3x plus 11. Uh, would you try solving this for us, please?
you have an answer? Do you have a question? What can I do to help here? No, I'm, I'm doing it. I just had to do it over again. Is it 10? That sounds right. Let's take a, take a look here. 5 times 10 minus 9, that's 41. And 3 times 10 plus 11, that is also 41. So that is correct. Good. So there, there's really like two things in geometry that you do, like in terms of like solving problems. And, and we've been doing a bunch of these right now, which is you set equal to each other. And the second is that they, they add up to something. Okay, and typically we, we've seen numbers like 90, 180, and we'll even see some 360 problems here. Okay, now it, what, it, what it appears to me is that you don't actually need to know like why, you just need to know, okay, in like this earlier problem where we had a parallelogram, you set those equal. But there are problems where you have information about the, um, the problem that allows you to say, okay, something adds up to something. So we're going to look at a few of those problems now. All right. So here is yet another parallelogram. This angle right here, 80, is known. This right here, I'm just going to call it X, it is, it is unknown. Okay. Now, here is the only geometry that you have to know, which is that consecutive angles add up to 180. All right, so consecutive angles here, angles next to each other. So this 80 plus X equals 180. And that's what I meant by, in the second thing, they add up to something. Typically, 90, 180, 360, those are your common ones that they're gonna add up to. And how do you know? Well, you, you got to spend a little time, you know, learning some of these. But if you recall, the 90 degree ones are when it's when it's that right angle. And the 180 are the straight lines and 360 are, are the circles. OK, but all of these geometry problems, the thing is, they just it's just like adding a layer. It's now like, OK, now it's a problem that you should be able to to solve. So could you uh, could you solve this for X for us, please? A hundred? I'm surprised by that. You look at the side with the variable, you subtract 80 from both sides, and that is your result. All right, so here's one like that for you to try before we get into more complicated ones. Uh, this time, I'm gonna just use a different, different letter. I'm gonna call this uh, up here Y. Okay, but it's the same, it's the same problem, type of problem as last one, uh, just different numbers. See if you can solve that for Y for us, please. How would I write a? Just like the previous problem, what did we write here? So it, all, it would always be 180 still? Yes. And, and, and what I was trying to show you is that, like, the situations you can look for, like, if it's a right angle, that's generally 90. If it's some sort of a straight line, that's 180. You can see these are kind of, a, there's kind of a straight line here. And then if it's a circle, if you're going all the way around something, uh, it's 360. So you're, you're going you're gonna to set up an equation here where these two, Y and 70, add up to 180.
110. Why is 110? Very good. Okay. Now they do get more complicated. So uh, like, I don't want to like dwell on the geometry. I want us to work on the algebra, which is the solving that we've been doing. So when I, when I put this next problem in front of you, I don't want you to feel like, oh no, I, you know, I wouldn't know how to do this. The, the, what they're giving you in this problem is just like the last, it's just a little bit more complicated. They're giving you two of the angles. So these two angles, they add up to 180. 80 degrees plus 11 at minus 10 equals 180. So this, this angle Z plus this angle Y equals 180. And we're just putting, we're just putting the, the number or the expression in. And so, so this, is, this is the algebra here. You have to be able to solve something like this. And to do it, you, know, you, you look at the side with the variable. There's only variables only on one side. And this time, this time you have to combine like terms. Do you see how you can combine the 80 and the minus 10? Yeah. So combine those. What does that become? Would 80 that be minus 70? 10. Yep. So you got 70 plus 11x equals 180. I want you to try solving it from here. Ten. Ten. X equals ten. Now let's just say I wanted to know the measure of angle Y. I, I want to know what this eleven X minus ten is. Do we have enough information to figure that out? Where is the M coming from? That's just Okay, let's forget about that. M just means measure. Oh. Uh, means like length. Uh, but angle Y, angle Y is 11X minus 10. Do we know enough to be able to solve this for X? I don't know. I think so. We have the value of X. So I want you to put that value of X in there and determine the angle measure please oh i forgot this is the same um so it... i don't know i'm not sure what you would do next because wouldn't that just this... turn it back to 110 no yes I don't and know. then you and then you subtract 10 so it would just be 100 Yes. 11 times 10 minus 10 is 100. All right. So just to recap here, to recap, this is what's important is that 80 plus 11x minus 10 equals 180. We took the two given things in the problem. We added them together and set them equal to 180. Is that clear? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to have you do exactly the same thing in the next, next problem here. All right, so I'd like you to uh, solve for X.
I don't think I did it right. I got a remainder in my answer. Do I combine the 35 and the five? Oh, that's what happened. I I uh, messed up with addition. I put it as 45 instead of 40. Okay, so just keep working it from uh, from wherever you, from that point and uh, see if you can solve for X. Ten. Okay, so X is ten. So I want you to use that to find angle T. T is fourteen times X plus five. One forty five. Right. So our, our last problem of this type here, uh, we'll work it. We'll work to set it up here together. But it it uh, these are all equations that you know how to solve. Like I'm not throwing anything new at you. The only thing new is just this this little added geometry part here. Um, so what's maybe a little unclear is that this nine x plus fifteen is the angle on the left, and the six x plus fifteen is the angle on the right. Could have been formatted a little better, but that is what we have here. These add together, these add together to make 180. So it's 9x plus 15 plus 6x plus 15 equals 180. So you always go to the side with the variable. Once you get certain down, you go to the side with the variable. So do I combine both of those like terms, the 9 and yes. x and the 215s? Yes. So it would be 15x, it would be 15x plus, and then 15 times two plus 30 equals 180. Right, so could you solve this for x for us, please? Ten. X is 10. Now, could you use that to find both U and V? U is 105 and V is 75. One of the ways I'm checking that is, is when it's not just like through the manipulation of the numbers here. It's it's that they, they also add up to 180. 180. So that's another kind of way here to make, you know, does my answer make sense here? All right. Okay. So we're going to go look at one of your problems here. And uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to snip it in here. Um, actually, we're going to first look at the units, and then I'll snip in the rest. Okay. Do you remember from our previous lesson what the box means in terms of the angle measure? And 90? 90. So this is 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees. Now the problem here is the problem, and I'm gonna just I'm, I'm gonna help here by by adding this. And this is x degrees, and then this is uh, and actually we don't even need the degree symbol. I'm gonna I'm gonna add it to unnecessary complexity. So this is x, and this is three uh, x plus 20 up here. Okay. So in this problem. If you go all the way around, all the way around, 
I mean, it's not a circle, but just imagine like if you go all the way around all the angles, this adds up to 360. So you have 90 plus 90 plus X plus 3X plus 20 equals 360. How do you know that that's 360? Well, it, 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 there's a, because it's a quadrilateral 360, I'm trying to just generalize it to like imagining going all the way around here. Um, let's not focus on that. Let's just focus on how to solve this because that's important. You have to be able to solve something like this to do well on your, on your test. Um, Is it 40? Okay, um, let's take a look here. I, I didn't actually work it out. What did you do first? I combined the stuff, so I made it 4X, um, and then 90 plus 90 plus 20, I think is 200. Good. And then uh, I minus 200 from 360 and got one, uh, 160, and then divided it by four, or 4x and got 40. Very good. Okay. Now, here is the actual question. It, it wants you to find the measure of angle F. Angle F here. So I want you to go back and x is 40, but is that the measure of angle F? Do I do the same thing where I do three times 40 plus yes. 20? Yes. One forty. It is one forty. Good. Okay, really good. So let's look at a problem like that. So if you go all the way around, all the way around, it's three hundred and sixty degrees. So these four angles add up to 360 degrees. All right, so I'd like you to write the equation and solve for x.
Is it eight? Okay. Well, let's just say it is eight. So that would make angle D equal to 11 times eight minus two, which is 86. And yes, that does work. Very good. All right, uh, let me give you another one to try here. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so here's a new one. Again, uh, I guess first, uh, let's just have you solve for X. Six. X is six. That's great. Now, the problem would likely ask you to determine the uh, value of angle M. Can you do that for us, please? One ten. Seventeen times six plus eight is one ten. Very good. All right, good job on that. So uh, this one again, just you know, throwing in a little wrinkle to see if see if everything's clear. Um, again, like you to solve for x in this problem. Five. Okay. So more importantly than that, though, is to determine. <clears throat> and then you. Uh, the angle that's missing. Could you do that for us, please? Eighty-two. 
It is 82. Very good. Yes. So the, the full, you know, the full problem here is, is something like this, um, where it's not any different than what we've been doing. Um, but this is, you know, this is, this is your full, full problem here, um, where they want you to find the measure of angle Y to do that. Just like we've been doing in all the problems so far, you have to, you have to write an equation solve it and then put it back in to here to get a value for uh for y all right so let's let's have you try this um and then we'll we'll just maybe do a little bit more solving depending on time here I don't know. I think I did it wrong because when I added up all the variables, it made 360. Or not variables, but like terms. So you've got 84 plus 90 plus 2x plus 118 plus 2x plus 68 equals 360. Do you do you have every do you have all this written down? Yeah, just not in that order. Okay, that's fine. But yeah, those are all the numbers I have. I wait. 84, 90, 90. I think I only put them in there once. Yeah, I have all those. Okay, so it's 4x plus, and then again, it's like, it's okay if you want to use a calculator to add these up here. I'm, I'm going to do that I, myself. I did use a calculator. It just came out to 360. So I'm going to put it in again. I just wasn't okay. sure if I accidentally it, wrote down yeah. different numbers. No, is it 360? It is 360, yeah. So oh. um, that's okay. I mean, we haven't seen one like this in a while, but that's okay. So how do you do this one again? Because then you would, you would subtract it, so it'd be okay. a zero. That's fine, four X equals zero. You don't look at the side with, with you look at this, you, you only look at the side with the variable. It, that, what that suggests is that you're looking at the side that does not have the variable, which is not important. You look at the side with the variable. What do you do to undo this? You would divide it by four, but wouldn't that make it zero still? It does, and that's okay. So the sides would just be 68 and 118? Yes. Okay, let's do a couple of solving uh, exercises here real quick. So I'll do uh, I'll do a problem and then you will do a problem. So, uh, you know, just re re reminder of some solving here, this kind of stuff you got to be able to do. So on the left here on the side with the variable, you combine like terms 4x minus 8 equals 24. Then you add 8 to both sides because you undo addition subtraction before for division, and then you divide both sides by four and X equals, all right. So I'm gonna leave that up and give you one to try over here on the right. And uh, go ahead and just work this one out. Let me know what uh, what you come up with.
X equals six. X equals six, that is correct. All right, really good. Okay, so let me just throw in a, just, I mean, I, I assume this would help here. Um, I'll just put some problems here at the end of the notes. Uh, sometimes I forget that I can do this here. And, uh, you know, these would be good for you to try on your own. Um, just to see, you know, just to see if, if, if you got them. We're you know, unfortunately pretty much out of time for today. Uh, so for Thursday, for Thursday, really, really important that you send over something new.